A quarter of adults in Britain are so obsessed with cleaning and tidying that they spend four years of their waking lives on household chores. With many feeling compelled to abide by strict regimes and rituals. My friends and family are allowed to pee in my toilet, but they are not allowed to poo. This is my show bin. Bought it a year ago, but decided it was too good to use. I like to look at the pictures just to calm myself throughout the day until I can get in and start my cleaning routine. But for most of us, keeping our homes clean and tidy is not a priority. I've seen it all now. This is just something else. I mean, this is like a different level. In fact, one in ten of us admit to not cleaning the bathroom for at least a month. What is on your ward? Sick or poo? Yeah, not sick, no. And 15% of Brits haven't vacuumed in over three months. Ah! Can a group of obsessive cleaners transform the habits of a nation? Are you doing any cleaning today? Because I'm not doing all this myself. Or will this prove too much? <sighs> the smell is really, really bad. I'm still keeping them. Do what you like. For the people whose need for perfection... What's all that on the cooker? That is grot. ...has become an obsession. How long has that been there for? How am I supposed to know? I didn't vomit. Bleach kills 99.9% .9 of all germs. My fogger will kill 100%, so nothing survives. With his specialist chemical fogger, 38-year-old crime scene cleaner Mick spends up to four hours a day keeping his one-bedroom apartment forensically clean. My job consists of cleaning, and you might as well do something you enjoy doing. Trauma cleaning, I go to a property after a suicide, after a possible murder. I go in, I decontaminate, I remove the waste, um, and I clean up. I've only just moved into this property, and the oven hasn't been cleaned yet and there's no way I'm cooking my food in there until I've cleaned it. I use non-bio washing powder because I know that's going to get everything off. Put your partner in the bath with it. <laughs> <laughs> These will stay in there for three to four hours. The grease and grime will definitely be gone. Job done. I use tweezers in, in my sink. I know where my partner's been in there because there'll be a ton down there and it's definitely not mine. Although not OCD diagnosed, Mick's obsessive cleaning affects his relationship with girlfriend Tanya. I've been with partner for four and a half, coming on five years now. We don't actually live together because of the way he is. Couldn't handle the mess, so I've had to move out. Love you See you later. Bye. Bye. And I've moved next door. It's the only way we're going to stay together. <laughs> Mick will be leaving his pristine apartment. That's better to show someone at the opposite end of the cleaning spectrum how to keep an immaculate home. I want the chance to help somebody else and hopefully learn a little bit more about why people are the way they are. And hopefully it will help me be able to eventually move back in with my partner. I think my partner would like me to change because the way I see it is that I'm just normal. Everyone else is just messy. <laughs> Mick has travelled over 60 miles to meet someone with a very different attitude towards cleanliness. In my job, I don't get to meet the people that make the mess, and today I do, so I do not know how I'm going to react. It doesn't look like a messy house, but they've obviously uh, got something to hide because they keep their curtains drawn. That's yours. Yes. 99% of the stuff on the floor belongs to Julian. It's not home, really, is it? It's just... Mm, it's just got into a mess. Yeah. Do you know, we've never eaten at this table. We have. Julian, we haven't sat at this table and eaten since we bought it. OK, I'm not arguing. Married couple of 30 years, you Rosemary win. and Julian, <laughs> haven't deep cleaned their cluttered home in Northamptonshire for 15 years. Kitchen's been tidy. Quite a few times, actually, but I've just given up now. Yeah, I always see cleaning as a low priority. Yeah. The house has got into a bit of a state, and I think it's partly due to Julian's Asperger's. He's actually in the process of being diagnosed. 
Asperger's is a form of autism which affects behaviour. I think the non-cleaning isn't particularly due to laziness. He just doesn't see the need. Julian and Rosemary run a model railway shop, but Julian's love of trains and toys isn't just confined to work. I do take things back from the shop to the house and it does create more mess. Just my head in because yeah. it's everywhere and all you have to talk about is trains. The mess has started to have an effect on their relationship. Because of the state of the house, we really tend to live separate lives. Rosemary now sleeps in the stock room above the train shop. It does get cold. It would be much better to be able to have my own bed. If it carries on like this, I'm not going to be here much longer because I just can't take any more. If the house doesn't change, Rosemary will leave me and I don't want that to happen. With Julian at the train shop, it's down to Rosemary to show Mick round their home. Hello there. Hello. How are you? My name's Rosemary. My name's Mick. Thank you. Wow. The dining area. <laughs> Can you dine in here? <laughs> no. I am shocked with the stuff on the floor. I know. Where do you start? Well, that's the problem. I don't know where to start. Ah, huh. uh -huh. this is the tidy room. It, just, I couldn't, I couldn't come in here and sit in here. No. I couldn't. When was the last time you opened the curtains? Ten years. It's been that really? long. Really? Yeah. And this is the kitchen. Wow. Do you cook in here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my other half, Julian. Yeah, what's he do? He's quite good at piling up the dishes in the sink. When was the last time the washing up was done? Uh, it's only about a week. Do you not worry about food poisoning or anything? No. Oh, oh. One bathroom. Don't, it's awful. Even I want to throw up. I do think that's rank. Is that a bedroom? <sighs> Oh, unbelievable. <coughs> you don't dust in here often? No. When was the last time you cleaned this room? I would like to give you a date, but I don't have a clue. I have been in some squats that are generally nicer than this. Not really looking forward to meeting the husband because from the sounds of things, it's more him than her. She's obviously given up and he's now obviously not helping. With a four day clean ahead, Mick's keen to show Rosemary the standards he keeps in his own germ-free home. We'll start with the kitchen. Oh, blimey. Where's all your stuff? <laughs> in the cupboards. <laughs> <laughs> where, where it should be. That's my bedroom. Oh my goodness. That's made every morning. I pour the covers over. Isn't that a clean soil, man? That's the front room. It does look nice. Would you prefer like, living like that or...? I think I would prefer living towards that. Mick's house looked a little bit sterile, but I've got to be honest, I did like it how it was clean. Rosemary's a lovely lady and it's, it, uh, it seems sad and heartbreaking that she's got that lovely home and she's getting no use out of it. That could be your mum and you wouldn't want to see your mum living like that. 20% of Brits admit to never polishing or dusting their homes, but for some, the duster is rarely out of their hands. I'm polishing my helmet and I do it three times a day. I've been cleaning motorcycles for about 29 years now. When I finish the job, there's not a speck of oil. I'm the best in the business. 51-year-old professional motorbike valeter Dave spends up to three hours a day keeping his one-bedroom flat in Surrey immaculately clean. On my kitchen sink, I use a motorcycle chrome polish. Look at that for a finish. Shame about the petrol smell, but it's worth it for the end result. And with a phobia of dust, Bachelor Dave does all he can to keep his gaff gleaming. There's no dust in my house. You can have a good look. There's nothing anywhere. I've been OCD diagnosed for about 12 years, and um, it does control my life. OCD is like a little voice saying, come on, Davis, get this right. You know, we've got to make it perfect. 
Straight lines are very important to me. Wonky's a word that I just don't want to get involved with. And the straight lines don't just apply to his towels. I will hoover three times a day minimum. After I've finished hoovering, I will take the main handle off with the head and I will do my stripes just to get nice straight lines. Look at that, like a football pitch. Dave will be leaving his immaculate flat to show someone with a very different attitude to housework how to keep clean and organised. I really hope to come home and be able to get on with my life a little bit, sit on my sofa, have somebody around for a meal, just enjoy my life a bit more really, rather than being restricted to just cleaning. Dave has travelled 140 miles to the West Midlands to a home with very different standards of cleanliness. I feel anxious because I just don't know how bad it's going to be. I think it's going to be worse than what I ever imagined. Please allow time for the door to be answered. Presumably, they've got a lot of stuff to get past to get to me. The last time I dusted that television, six months ago. Robbie Tommy Jumper. I describe my flat as a tip at the moment. 59-year-old car boot sale enthusiast Les has lived in his studio bungalow in the West Midlands for 13 years. This is my sleeping department. I've changed my bed once a year. There's only me sleeping in it, and it is a single bed. I didn't clean my kitchen for the last nine months. It needs cleaning, but I just haven't had the art to do it. But I don't have a bath regularly because there is stuff in the bath. I mainly wash down at the sink. It is impossible to live in a place like this, which is quite small. The house is cluttered with so much stuff because I am a hoarder. Les has collected a mass of DIY tools and other people's junk. The last time I cleaned the room, I don't remember. I have got a hoover in the kitchen, actually. There is a hoover which is under some carrier bags just in that kitchen. Les moved into the bungalow 13 years ago when his marriage broke down. When I was with my wife, she used to keep things under control. She used to put everything in its right place and things have got worse and worse since my wife left me. I don't have nobody around at the moment, just me and my four walls. Hello there. Hi there. I'm Les. Hi mate, I'm David. I'm, right, would you like to come through? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. This is my living room. Bloody hell, mate. It's horrible. When was the last time you hoovered in here? I can't remember. You can't remember? No. This year? Last year? Last year, I think. Last year? Sometime last year. Crikey. Well, it is warm in here, mate. I think all the rubbish is insulating in the place. True. This is my kitchen. Good grief, man. It's bloody horrible, mate, isn't I know, it? I know, I know. When was the last time the cooker was used? About a couple of years ago. The reason you're not using it is because the stuff on top and you don't yes. want to move it. Yes, exactly. That's just bloody laziness. This is my bed, this is where I sleep. How often do you clean your bed sheets, Liz? About every six months. Six months? Yes. Crikey, man. This is my bathroom. Jesus. Bloody can't stand dust, man. There is loads. Don't, please. <coughs> I'm gonna go sick, I really am. <coughs> I was very, very surprised that he puked up. I can't stand dust like that. Cleaners have got to clean dust. If he doesn't like dust that much, he shouldn't be a cleaner. Les's house was absolutely disgusting in there. The rubbish, the dust. Everything. It's just, um, I don't know how someone can live like that. Before they embark on the four day clean, Dave wants to show Les the standards that he will be expecting to achieve. Right, let's start off with this one. That's my kitchen. Do it three times a day. Three times a day? Yep. Yeah. That's my kitchen sink. I clean that with motorcycle polish. Motorcycle yeah. polish? That's my lounge. I don't sit in my lounge to watch TV. I watch TV from the dining room because I don't want to walk on the stripes. I don't know how you can live like that. I've been OCD diagnosed for 12 years and I just 
I have to keep things absolutely spotless. That's the bathroom. That's how clean the sink is. Jesus. And these are all polished. What, with engine oil? No, no, I use uh, furniture polish on them. To me, it's pathetic. I think me and Dave are going to really have a lot of issues, a real big lot of issues, and I mean big. And I don't think for a minute he's going to get stripes on my carpet. I know I can make a complete difference to him in there. Got to make space in there, and there is stuff that he's going to disagree with for chucking, stuff that he hasn't used for 10 years, get rid of it. In Northamptonshire, it's the first day of the clean. Crime scene cleaner Mick has just four days to tackle Rosemary and Julian's chaotic marital home. Mick has ordered a skip and wants to clean and clear the living room, the dining room, the kitchen and the bedroom. Good morning, Rosemary. I'm ready for a good day's clean. Are you ready? Rosemary's a really nice lady. She reminds me of my mum and uh, so I just want to help her. <laughs> I just want to make it so it's habitable for her because that's no way to live. Don't take offence, but I'll be wearing a mask because no, uh, of all. the dust. Yeah. That's all. I would understand that. Whilst husband Julian mans the train shop for the day, Rosemary and Mick make a start on the bedroom, which hasn't been cleaned or seen daylight in over 10 years. Right, and Rosemary, let's get these curtains open. Don't open them. <laughs> are they bad, are they? <laughs> Jesus. Rosemary. That's, that's just not healthy, really, Rosemary. Curtains closed, you, you don't see it. I think we're going to uh, start, start picking the rubbish up. Oh! Where's um, your husband today, Rosemary? Oh, he's at the shop at work. Okay. He's got a train shop. I tend to sleep there at the shop. Really? Because it's just horrible here. I've got a, like a mattress on the floor. You can't sleep in a shop, surely. Not when you go home. <laughs> well, it's not home, though, is it? it no, not at the like moment, home. but it will be. Yeah. Yeah. Why has it got to this stage, then? I'd got so used to just existing in this that yeah. I was, I'd almost shut myself off from it. <coughs> and with showing you around and you looking around, I kind of saw it with different eyes. Yeah, yeah. And it really got to me. I sat in really? bed crying my eyes out. Yeah. Coping with it is really hard. Oh, I, can't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually. Oh. It kind of brought home to me that I don't actually have a home. It's it's horrible. In fact, she sleeps in shop. Her. Uh... I find that really sad. Yeah, that's, that tugs, tugs at me, that does. I still can't see it right at this moment any different because I've had hope for things before and it hasn't changed. And, and I'm too scared to hope again. She can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, so, you know, I want to give her some hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. We get it clean. You get back in and start sleeping in your bed again. <laughs> we thought I had grey cuppers. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first day of the clean in the West Midlands. Dustphobic Dave has just four days to tackle Horde and Les's bungalow. My objective is to get rid of 90% of all the stuff. It could be quite tough getting Les to agree to throw stuff out, but I'll, I'll persuade him, I'm sure I will. Dave has ordered a skip and wants to clean and clear the living room, kitchen and bathroom. First, the living room, where Les has stored years of car boot purchases and DIY tools. You're going to have to be quite tough with yourself, all right, right, right but yes. you will have an end result out of it and you have all this space to right. have as your lounge again. What's in there? There? Yeah. It's uh, keep stuff. All that stuff on that pole you're going to keep? Yeah. Right. Yes, keeping that. You're keeping that. that. That's that. fine, mate. And that. That's cool. You have a lot of new stuff that you never use, do you? True, yeah. You? What's one, that for? One window cleaner. Do you clean the windows? Yes, eventually. What's that about? Anything? Are you yep. going to use that again? Yep. Are you sure? Yep. Do you have friends around to come and see you? No. Why? Because they can't get in. Because they can't get in. Because you hoard. Exactly. Why have you got two buckets? One to pee in, one to sick in. For God's sake, man, you're disgusting. 
Do you have two of a lot of things? Yes, I do. Why? What's that reason? Uh, the reason I don't know. I'm just an order, and I. Why? Right. So I, are I, you are you keeping those two buckets because you're a hoarder? Yes. Well, we'll get rid of one then. Why? Are you going to use? No, you're doubting it. I can see it in your face. Yes, because that's going to be. I've got a TV that's going in there. Really? Yes. Oh, look at that! Brand new knife. You're going to use that as well, aren't you? Yes. With the blades. Yes. I'm feeling pretty stressed, to be quite honest. He's, he's just starting to piss me off a little bit now. Every single item, I'm keeping that, I'm keeping it, and it's, it's, it's just not on. Right, Les. We're a bit of a stalemate with what you want to keep and what you want to chuck away, yeah? How about if you come and have a look at my place? See, the way I live quite organised, it might make you just sort of think a bit different, yeah? I'll give it a go. Take your shoes and socks off. Uh, take your shoes off, definitely. Obsessive compulsive disorder affects hundreds of thousands of people across the UK. Sufferers have their lives dominated by obsessional thoughts and compulsive acts. I feel like now I've steamed it, any germs that were left over are now burning in hell. Mum of three, Hayley, was diagnosed with OCD seven years ago. She has a fear of dirt and germs that can make her scrub the house for up to 19 hours a day. I feel like if I don't carry out certain rituals and clean things a certain way, that something bad will happen. Facing my fears is really important because I think it reiterates the fact that the OCD is just a fault and nothing bad is going to happen if I come into contact with things that are dirty. But Hayley wants to confront her obsessive thoughts. <laughs> So gross. Each week, she will invite two equally obsessive cleaners to join her in using their extreme cleaning rituals to tackle some of Britain's dirtiest places. Oh my. Together, they will face their fear of germs head on. Sorry, I think I'm going to be sick. This week, they will be tackling microwaves. After demonstrating how they clean their own, they'll put their methods to work on these abandoned microwaves that are teeming with germs. When I clean my microwave, I wet a cloth and I will pour orange oil on it. Orange oil has got degreasing properties. It literally just takes it off. I will then use special window cleaning solutions and it turns to like a chalky powder and then the vacuum just sucks the chalk off. This takes away all the streaks. It's just an arc to triumph. This week, Hayley is joined by fitness instructor Vinny. Although not OCD diagnosed, he'll clean his microwave twice a day, even if he hasn't used it. I clean the outside first. I take the plate out, soak the plate in bleach, wash it down with washing up liquid and drying it off. And then I do the inside with the dental wipes. I love shiny things and it's very, very important to me to look shiny, like myself. <laughs> Mum of three, Jade, is cleaner number three. OCD diagnosed, she will scrub her home for up to six hours a day. When I clean the microwave, I use hot soapy water and a sponge all on the outside, all on the inside. Then I rinse it off with plain water, give it a nice buffer up so it's looking nice and shiny. And to make sure I haven't missed any little bits, I get the cocktail sticks and go around the outside. The cleaners are swabbing their own microwaves to establish how sterile they are. Any score under 500 means the surface is clean enough to eat off. 58. That's not that good. Happy days. I'm happy with that. Oh, it's not bad. <laughs> so they've got their own microwaves almost spotless. But what will they think of these abandoned microwaves in a recycling plant? How will the cleaners cope? It's just absolutely disgusting. And will they be able to bring them up to their standards? It smells like a gone-off cow's boob. <laughs> <laughs> With the clean at a standstill in the West Midlands, Dave has taken Les, who knows nothing about OCD, to see his Surrey flat. All right, be careful of the mud, Les. Just walk over it, mate, all right? I'm not having that on my carpets, all right? To showcase a clutter-free home. Right, go in, Les. Take your shoes off, please, buddy. Well done. Thanks, mate. What do you think? This is my little place. It looks like it's never been lived in because it is spotless. Do you mind not leaning on the wall? <laughs> Thank you, mate. How often do you sit on the beanbag? I don't. You don't? No. 
you and I are two different people. Yeah. You've got uh, O D O C D O O C D, which I don't know a thing about. No, I know you don't. Follow me along here because we're not going to walk on that. You follow right. me, mate. All right. This is my kitchen. I do this three times a day. The oven's never been used. Never. No. And uh, in the cupboards, I have everything with the writing down the right way. This is where I normally sit to have my dinner right. and watch TV. And the way I collect the actual controllers is she so walk around the edge of the carpet like this. I go across like this. And I come around the edge and I sit down here like this and watch TV. I think you are a bit of a f over the top because it's unnormal. Why do you have to clean so much? I would have thought that once you clean once, yeah. that should be su sufficient that you know it's clean. It is. Do you go around cleaning because you get lonely? Most probably. I most probably clean because I'm lonely and um, I'm hoping by go to your house, which is completely dirty compared with mine, mm. that I might think mine's not that bad after all. With your OCD. D. Where has it come from? Is it, it stems from childhood, I believe. I was criticised a lot. And what I do now is keep everything spotless and on top of everything, so I'm not criticised. I feel sorry for Dave because he has got o OCD. It's an habit he's got. And if he doesn't get over it, he's going to take him down. In Northamptonshire, it's the second day of the clean. Whose knickers your place? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And Rosemary's husband, Julian, has taken time out from his model train shop to help Mick out with the chaotic dining room. How do you feel about Rosemary sleeping at the shop then? Well, obviously I'd prefer it if she was here, but uh, the way of things are, she's just been feeling rather uncomfortable here, so... Would you not like, you know, for Rosemary to come home and join you and...? Yes. Yeah? Yes. I, I find it hard to understand, to be honest with you. I just, um... Yeah, you know, I just it's, why you know why you don't do anything about it. It's it's just that because everything was had got so out of hand, yeah. I seriously didn't know where to start. I'd sort of clear up so we I'd have a nice clear space and Julian, you'd decide all oh, let's join in and help and then dump everything in my clear space. True. Nothing ever got moved, it just got moved from one place to another. Yes, I am guilty of that. Why is it now, Julian, that you've decided that enough is enough? The reality is that Rosemary's had enough. Yeah. And, um, and do you love Rosemary enough to...? Yes, yes, that's the reality. In all seriousness, if we weren't chucking rubbish out, I'd be chucking Julian out. So I'm cleaning your home and saving your relationship as well. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let's hope you can keep on top of it then, Julian. Got a photo here. 86, I think. Was it 86? Yes. Memories. The dreams that were then are not here now. Rosemary was absolutely stunning that day when we got married. I'm prepared to do everything that I can to keep Rosemary and I together. I don't want to lose her and Things need to change, and they will do. In the West Midlands, with just two days left of the clean, Dave's hoping that Les has changed his attitude to decluttering, having seen his flat. After Les seeing my property, I think it's going to be easier to get things done because he can see what a house looks like without the clutter inside. The first thing I really want to know is, do you want to keep the cash registers? Um, Are you going to use them? No, let's go in. Right, that's, that's the result straight away. Look at the difference already. Look, you've got space. True. Rubbish. Well done. Rubbish. Okay, mate. Who are you today, Les? Different man, mate. You're just cracking on. I was thinking about it last night and I said to myself, well, he's come to help me out. Coming in this morning, I'm a change person. I'm binning everything. 
The job is getting done today and it's a different relationship in all ways. We're getting on like a house on fire. Just as. Has that been used? No. No? No. Well, we'll let these see the light of day today. Having cleared the living room, dustphobic Dave and Les must now tackle the bathroom, which hasn't been cleaned in eight years. Look at the state of your window ledge. Would you like me to open the toilet lid so you can puke? Don't, please. <coughs> I think, Dave, that's finger licking good. <laughs> Don't, mate, honestly. You filthy man you are. Bottom of the barrel you are, honestly, mate. <sighs> Absolutely rotten. The final room to clear is the kitchen which hasn't been deep cleaned since Les moved in 13 years ago. What's this, Les? My lovely dog's ashes, Sally. You're unreal, mate. You really are. In the kitchen. I'm having more fun with Dave today because obviously I have wound him up quite a bit. Take it away, mate, please. Please. Right, how did you actually get to this state in the first place? I don't know, really. It's just... Being on my own and being so lazy. Yeah. Have you been married before? I've been married, yes, and I'm now divorced. With my wife, she did most of the work. Yeah. When was the last time, do you think, you had somebody in here to watch TV and have a bit of food, etc.? Years. Over five? Really? Over five years, maybe ten years. Oh, you poor man. You've had no one in here at all? No. Nope. Oh, good grief. I'd like to have friends round to have a cup of tea, coffee. I wouldn't come round here for some food, be quite honest, but, um, or a cup of tea. Can I offer you a cup? No, no, honestly. When we got the job done, yeah? yeah. Then I will take up your invite for a cup of tea. Is All that right. a deal? Cool. Germs live everywhere, and most people come into contact with millions of them every single day. For those that are healthy, it isn't an issue. But for some sufferers of OCD, it can be a problem. I don't think I ever feel happy with my home. It never feels completely germ-free. Haley has invited two obsessive cleaners to help her tackle these mould-infested microwaves at this recycling yard. Ooh, what is that? It's just absolutely disgusting. Haley hopes this will help them reduce their cleaning routines in their own homes. <laughs> When I opened up the microwave, I literally wanted to be sick. It smells like a gone-off cow's boob. Oh, my God. That's pure filth. I'm used to clean, not filth. First, the cleaners swab the microwaves to see how much dirt they have to eliminate. A reading of over a 1,000 could increase the risk of harmful bacteria being present. Oh, my God. These mouldy microwaves have a reading of up to 6,441. They will now showcase their own cleaning methods to see if they can get them close to spotless. It's like everything I hate about the world. It's disgusting. And it's so slimy. It's like a slug-infested microwave, but with porridge. <laughs> Let me have a go. Oh my god, Jay, yeah, look at all that. Yeah. I've seen it all now. What are you doing? Are you hoovering your microwave? It is a hoover, but it's for the it's for glass. So once I've put the glass solution on, it turns to like a powder, and then as you pull down, the hoover sucks the powder into it and then it leaves it like streak free. That sounds amazing though. I want one. After three hours of scrubbing and ten bottles of cleaning products, the inside of the microwaves are as good as new. That looks like three sexy microwaves. It does indeed. Shiny and sexy. Before, these microwaves were teeming with germs. A quick swab will reveal how clean they are now. A reading of 500 or under is considered clean enough to eat off. Ten. That's good. <laughs> I'm going to be out there doing that thing, but yes. 13. 13. That's good, From isn't 6, it? From 6,000. You've got to be well happy with that. <gasps> well done. That's good. Well done. Six. Six. I'm so pleased with that. Yeah. Yeah. 
We have spent a whole day around all these bacteria and germs and all three of us are fine. None of us are sick, none of us are gonna die and I feel like we've all really pushed our boundaries today. When I'm at home, I clean my microwave every day. Well, after today, I'm gonna try maybe just once a week. I'm gonna see, see how it makes me feel. I think I really faced my fears today. So I'm gonna walk away with the golden star on my chest because I feel like a general right now. Back in Northamptonshire, it's the third day of the clean. Crime scene cleaner Mick has cleared Rosemary and Julian's bedroom and dining room. What is that? Is that creatures in there? Yeah, there is, yeah. He now wants to tackle the kitchen using his specialist trauma scene cleaning equipment. That looks like a bit like a Ghostbusters. Kills all the baddies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mick's machine sprays a chemical that kills almost 100% of germs. I'm just going to leave that for half an hour now. OK. So that fogger thing, do you actually use it up for work? Yeah, I do use it for work, but I also use it in my, uh, in my kitchen at home. Does that cause any problems, you know, sort of thinking about family and stuff like that? I've been with my partner for four, four and a half years now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and last week, I, I moved out, moved into my own uh, flat next door. <laughs> yeah, because I can't, uh, I can't, I just can't handle uh, putting down crisp wrappers, and yeah. it, it really drives me to the point yeah. of insanity. It's yeah. quite similar in a sense, hasn't it? Yeah. You've yeah. kind of moved out, and I, yeah, I moved yeah. out because of the mess, and the same as yourself. I mean, you know. Yeah. Is there a way around that, do you think? Yeah, I need to sort of like take a step back sometimes. You know, it's not her, it is me. Do you think you would like to um, live with your partner again? Could, yeah, definitely. I couldn't think of anything you better. <laughs> do you think that this experience will make you not worry so much about a little bit of clutter? Yeah. Her, her mess is no mess, really. Rosemary's house compared to my partner's house has given me a big insight. I get a hump with just a mug. It does make me realise how uncomfortable I must make my partner feel. I would love to see Mick be able to chill out just a little bit more after this experience. <sighs> love the smell of clean. It's the fourth and final day in Northamptonshire and cleaner Mick still has to deal with Julian's toys, trains and tat. You run a hobby shop? Yeah. Yeah, so wouldn't it be better if the trains were in there? Yeah. Get rid of the toys, get your wife back. Mick's plan of getting my stuff out and rose me back in is an excellent plan. It's something I should have sorted a long time ago. Yay, good riddance to bad stink. No idea what that is. Back from the shop, Julian oh, mucks in with the clearing. I can't believe that Julian has just got really stuck in. Mick has given Julian the kick up the bum that he needs. He has actually helped me see the sunshine again. It's the final day of the clean in the West Midlands. Having filled the skip with years' worth of hoarding, Dave and Les are applying the finishing touches. A hundred times better than what it was. And Dave's got one final tip to keep Les on the straight and narrow. Straight down again. That's it. Doesn't that look better, mate? Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. First class drive. Coming along to see how they've got on is Les's former colleague, Sue. Last time I went to Les's place, it was a right mess. There was clutter in every room. I'm hoping it means now we'll be able to have people around. Hi there, Sue. Hi, Les. Hi, would like to come in? Thank you. Hi, Sue. Hi. Nice to meet you, right? Yes, good, thank good. you. Four days ago, the living room was cluttered with cash machines and car boot sale tat, with no space to move. It's now a bright and inviting room, with plenty of space to relax. Oh my goodness! Les, this is wonderful, look at it! Couldn't even see that fireplace before, wow. I don't think. I don't even think you got one. It was that cluttered. You must be happy with it. Of course I am. It's looking lovely. you just got to keep on top of it now. Of course I am. The bathroom was once a dingy and dirty haven for dust, with the tub used as storage. It 
is now spotless and sparkling, ready for lads to bathe in once again. Oh, well, that's much better, Liz. Big difference? Yes, yeah. definitely. Liz, you can get in the bath now. True, yes. <laughs> How long's it been since you've been able to get in that bath and have a six, good wash? Six months. Before, the kitchen was a dumping ground, with the surfaces covered in clutter. It's now glistening and gleaming with everything put away. Oh, my word. I can see your kitchen now, Liz. I can see your cooker. True, and it does work. That's it, I'm coming round to tea now. Oh, yeah, right. You've it's... transformed him. Yeah. Cheers, Sue, yes. you know. The question is, can... have, I tra have I transformed Dave? I'll find out when I go home. I know your kitchen's all done, Les. You better get that kettle on and you can True. make me a nice cup of tea. Yes. Do you want one, Dave? I'd love one, please, mate. Dave has changed my life. I can invite Sue round, I can invite all my friends round. Thank you very much. No worries, for mate. For all you've done. No. From the bottom of my heart. Yeah, good man. Well done. Cheers, buddy. Well done, both of you. Well done, Cheers, Dave. Sue. Well done, Les. Cheers. Right, Thanks. Les. Thank you very much, Dave. I think I've changed Les's life around completely. Keep on top of it. Yes. All right, because I'm not keep... coming back. I think he can have friends around now without any embarrassment, and I think he's just going to have a happier life. I'll keep the stripes All right, good buddy. and strong. Good man. All right, you take care of yourself. Yes. All right, right, take care, Cheers. mate. Bye. Bye. The thing I've learned about my OCD is how over the top I am actually with what I do at home. Bye. Take it easy. I don't need to be as obsessive with what I do. I only need to clean once a day instead of three times. In the Midlands, after four days of cleaning and clearing a mountain of junk, Julian has taken all of his trains and toys to his shop, while Rosemary finishes off the bedroom. I can't be doing with that. And Mick's doing his level best to straighten things up. Coming along to see how they've got on is Rosemary's friend, Ginny. Rosemary used to let me come in, but then it got so bad, she said, no, I, you can't come in here anymore, so I would go to see her somewhere else. I'm really hoping that this is going to change things for them and that it'll be so much better. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I can get in! <laughs> Four days ago, the dining room was a mucky mess with clothes and clutter filling every bit of floor space. It's now a spacious and inviting room, perfect for entertaining. Oh, oh Rosemary, can't believe it. I know. It's like a different room. Oh, it is beautiful. Oh, oh it really is. Oh. It is, isn't it? I've never seen it like this before, and it feels just a different house already. We oh. would never have done it without oh, me. You did all this. Oh. With help, with Julian's <laughs> help. Before Mick arrived, Rosemary and Julian's kitchen was a filthy, fly-ridden space which hadn't been cleaned in 15 years. Now it's bright and hygienic, with everything put away. Countertops. Look at it. <laughs> You're going to enjoy it, aren't you now? Yeah. Doing stuff in here. Before, the living room was a dark and dingy space, which hadn't seen daylight in a decade. It's now light, clean, and ready for relaxation. Wow. Uh, oh. Oh my word. Can't believe it. It's the same place. I know. And look at that. I can see out the window. The curtains are pulled for the first time in how long? How long? Ten years. Ten years. Amazing. Finally, Rosemary and Julian's bedroom was strewn with clutter and litter. It's now back to its best, ready for Rosemary to sleep in once again. Oh, oh Rosemary, it feels so much bigger. I know. Any more nights at the shop? Definitely not. I should be sleeping in that bed. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We could start to live again. Little present there for you. Oh, my 
to you remind you of uh, when you got married okay. and why you're together. You made a, a massive difference to our lives, you know. Yeah. You so, really have done wonders for this couple. Thank you very much, Mick. Thank you is seems so inadequate because I can't express how grateful I am. So, oh, say bless goodbye. You. I'm hoping what I've done has uh, saved, saved their marriage. And if it has, then I'm a very proud man. I'm sorry for all the years that I've been living in a mess. And I'm going to try and keep it like this now. You better do. <laughs> yeah. I've learned a lot about myself, actually. I am maybe a little bit clinical, and I need to take a step back sometimes. Leave that cup on the floor. I'm hoping that I will move back in with my partner. I love her to pieces, so I want to move back in with her.